Hello students, welcome to my channel Engineers Academy. Kindly subscribe to my channel for the solution of such more problems. Now we are going to solve this particular problem from chapter 6 that is the friction topic. And the problem says that the uniform bar AB of mass M and length L is lean, leaning against the vertical wall as shown. The coefficient of static friction between the supporting surfaces and the ends of the pole is mu s that is 0 0.30. And we are required to determine the force, the external force P, which causes the impending slip if in the part A the external force acts to the right and in part B the external force acts towards the left, right. So, we are given here that this bar is leaning against these two walls, right. And in the first part we have to consider the external force that is acting towards the right, right. So now if I draw the free body diagram for this particular problem, so let's say that this, these are my walls and let's say that we are representing that bar by a single line like this, right. So this is that bar of uniform mass, right. So and this is that point A, here we have that point A and here we have that point B and at point B the external force in part A is acting towards the right, right. So, let us say this is that external force P. So, if the external force P is acting in this direction, so what will happen is that this end A of the bar will move downward, right. So, if it will move, if it is moving downwards, then the frictional force will be acting vertically upward here at this point A, right. So, this will be the friction force which will be acting vertically upward. And the normal force will be acting perpendicularly to the to this vertical wall, right? And let's say that that normal force is let's say represented by n a, right? So then this friction force will be equal to mu s n a, right? And similarly, if this p force is acting in this direction, so then we will have the friction force in a, which will be acting in the opposite direction. So let's say that this is that friction force, and the Horizontal surface will be applying the normal force in the upward direction like this. So, let us say this is N B and this friction force will be equal to mu S N B, right. And the weight of this uniform bar will be acting vertically downward at the mid length, right. So, it will be acting somewhere here, right. So, now if I apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0, right, since we are considering that the bar just before the impending motion the bar is in equilibrium, right. So, if we apply the equilibrium condition that is the summation of forces along x equals to 0. So, then as we can see that this p force is acting in the positive x direction if these are our positive x and y direction, right. So, then this p force is acting in the positive x direction. So, I will write p and this n a is acting in the positive x direction. So, I will write plus n a and this friction force is acting in the negative x direction. So, I will write minus mu s and b and we know that mu s is given which is 0 0.30. So, I will multiply, I will write 0 0.30 instead of this mu s, right. And this will be equal to 0. Similarly, if I apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0. So, as we can see that this mu s and a this friction force at point a is acting upward that is in the vertical uh, that is in the positive y direction. So, I will write mu s and a and again mu s is 0 0.30. So, I will write 0 0.30 and a and this and b is acting in the positive y direction as well. So, I will write plus and b and the weight is acting vertically downward. So, we have to write minus and g and this will be equal to 0. Now, if I apply the third equilibrium condition that is the summation of moment about point B equals to 0, right. If we apply the summation of moment about this particular point, so as we can see that these three forces are passing through this point B, so they will not produce the moment about this point B, right. So, now as we can see that this N A is producing the clockwise moment about that point B, so I will write minus N A and the moment arm of this N A from that point B is the is this length right let me represent that length right this length right and since we are given the length of this bar right and this bar is making 25 degrees with the vertical right so then we can say that this length is this length is the 
cos component of this L right. So, I can write that this length is L cos of 25 degree and similarly this length is this length is sine of that length right. So, we can write that this is L sine of 25 degrees right. So, the perpendicular distance of this and A from that point B is that cos component of that L right. So, we will multiply it with L cos of 25 degrees. So, I will multiply it with L cos of 25 degrees. Similarly, this friction force is producing the clockwise moment about that point B. So, I will write minus and mu s is again 0.3 Na and now the perpendicular distance of this uh, friction force from that point B is this length right which is equal to L sin of 25 degrees. So, I will multiply this with L sin of 25 degrees. Similarly, this mg is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point B. So, I will write plus mg and now the perpendicular distance of this mg from that point B if I draw a line here let me draw a, a, right, a triangle like this right. Let us say we have this triangle right. So, this mg is acting at the mid length right. So, this length will be L divided by 2 right and again if this angle is 25 degrees then this angle is also 25 degrees and the perpendicular distance of this mg from that point B will be this distance the base of this triangle and the base of this triangle will be equal to L divided by 2 sin of 25 degree. So, I have to multiply this mg with L divided by 2 sin of 25 degrees and this will be equal to 0. So, now if I divide this whole equation by L right. So, L will be cancelled out throughout from this equation right. So, now we can write this equation is minus N A cos of 25 degrees. This will be minus 0 0.3 N A sin of 25 degrees and this will be plus M G divided by 2. sin of 25 degrees and this will be equal to 0. So, now if I take an A common from both of these right. So, this will be if I if I take minus an A common. So, this will be minus an A and this will be cos of 25 degrees plus 0.3 sin of 25 degrees and if we bring this to the other side of the equation. So, its sin will become negative. So, we will have minus m g divided by 2 sin of 25 degrees. So, now I can simplify this. So, this will be cos of 25 plus 0 0.3 sin of 25. So, this gives me uh, 1.033. So, I can write this as minus 1.033 and a and similarly this is we can simplify it as uh, sin 25 divided by 2. So, sin of 25 divided by 2. So, we get 0 0.211 right. So, this will be minus 0 0.211 mg and the minus sign will cancel out and we will be left with an a if we divide both sides of the equation by 1.033. So, we will have an A in terms of mg right. So, we will get it as 0 0.211 divided by 0 0.211 divided by 1.033 1.033. So, this gives me 0 0.204 mg. So, so this is 0 0.204 mg right. So, an A equals to 0 0.204 mg. Now, let us say that uh, this is my equation 1 and let us say this is my equation 2. So, now if I put an A equals to 0 0.204 mg in equation 2 right. So, we will get an B in terms of mg right. So, from equation 2 we can write it as uh, 0 0.30 and A plus uh, and B. So, an, in place of an A I have to write it as uh, 0 0.204 mg plus n b minus m g and this will be equal to 0 and we can say 
if I take mg common from both of these terms right. So, this will be 0 0.304, 0 0.204 minus 1 mg plus mb and this will be equal to 0. So, we can simplify this, this will be 0 0.3 into 0 0.204 minus 1. So, this gives me minus 0 0.939 right. So, this is minus 0 0.939 mg plus nb equals to 0 and if I bring this to the other side of equation, so its sign will become positive. So, we will have 0 0.939 mg right. So, we have nb in terms of mg. Now, since we are required to determine this external force P, so what we need to do is that we need to put an A and an B values in this equation 1, right. So, we can write that equation 1. So, in equation 1 we have P plus N A. So, N A is 0 0.204 mg from here and we have then minus this minus 0 0.30 and N B is 0 0.939 mg and this will be equal to 0 and we can simplify it if I take mg common. So, this will be 0 0.204 minus 0 0.30 and this is 0 0.939 and this is equal to 0. So, we can simplify it. So, just 0 0.204 minus 0 0.30 point 0.939. So, this gives me uh, minus 0 0.077 right. This is P minus 0 0.077 mg and this is equal to 0 and if we bring this to the other side of equation. So, we will have this P external force equal to 0 0.077 mg right. So, this is that force P which is required to impend the motion right for the first case that is when the external force is acting towards the right. Now, for the second case uh, this P force will be acting towards the left right. So, if I demonstrate here right. So, let us say that this P force is acting in this direction then the friction force will be acting in the opposite direction right. So, this will be or let us say that this will be my friction force right and that will be equal to mu s and b right. Here we will have that normal force which will be acting vertically upward and b and similarly if if the external force is acting towards the left. So, then what will happen is that this bar will start moving this and a will start moving towards the upward direction right. Then the normal force will be acting in this direction that will be an a and the friction force will be acting in the downward direction right. So, this will be mu s and a right and m g will be acting at the same point that is like this right. So, now if we compare both of these diagrams right. So, this mu s and a is acting in the downward direction where in the first case mu s and a is acting in the upward direction. This mu s and b is acting in the opposite direction that is towards the right right. So, if we compare then the friction forces are acting in the opposite direction right and the and the external force is acting in the opposite direction since it is given right. So, now you people can apply the same method that is the summation of forces along x, the summation of forces along y and the summation of moment about point b and you people will get an a and b in terms of mg and by putting this and a and b in this that equation 1. So, you people will get that external force for that case b. Right. So, you people need to solve the second case yourself and let me know your answers in the comment section.